Listen, you, you, whoever you are, I ain't never held a gun to no man in my life. I never had that kind of nerve, never shot even a jackrabbit. But I can feel my nerve now, and I'll pull this trigger if you don't do exactly like I say. <laughs> Theater 5 presents Incident at Shadow Valley. Hope you ain't fussy, Jocko. Them hash browns got a little burnt tonight. Got a lot on my mind. Ralphie, you know, my little grandson, he's been poorly all day, and Nellie's had to tend him. And the road trail people are pulling the bus stop from me. They say I gotta have two toilets. I ain't finished paying for the first one. Well, here's your coffee. Tomorrow night I'll do better, Jocko. Give you a real good feed. That'll be uh, 85 cents. Oh, evening, Jocko. Pop. Pop, i got to talk to you. Ralphie? Oh, Pop, I don't think he'll make it. Not even through the night. Oh, if only he wouldn't talk about dying. I, I I, can't stand to hear him talking about dying. Maybe the doc can do something. I know. Well, go call the doc, Nellie. You don't mind? I mean about the bill. When it comes to debt, a couple more pebbles don't make the mountain look any bigger. Take a dime from the cash register. Clara, this is Nellie at the Last Chance Diner. Get me Doc Landers and Las Flores. No, no, not good at all tonight, Clara. Oh, well, I'll call a little later. Doc Landers ain't in, Pop. Here's the dime. I'm going back to the shack. Hey, what's all that? It's Doug McLeod. Looks like he's stopping here, Pop. Look, I'll be with Ralphie. See you, Jocko. Yeah. Hi, Doug. Evening, Pop. Why all the sirens, Sergeant? Accident, 20 miles east. Truck coming this way forced a passenger car off the road. Oh, darn shame. Anybody hurt? Driver killed. The rest shook up. Darn shame. Big black truck with a sign. Universal Road Freight. Universal Road Freight? Does it stop here? No, sir. Universal Road Freight. Never heard of it. Well, it must have passed, Pop. There's no turnoff less than I missed him or he went out on the flats. Not likely. I'll keep an eye out, Pop. Maybe you'll catch him. Not me. I ain't going to tangle with a trucker. My tangling days are over, Doug. Well, you got a gun, ain't you? If he shows up, hold him and call the state police at mine shaft. Okay? No, sir, Doug. I wouldn't touch that gun no more than a rattler. I ain't going to tangle. That's your job. I got mine. See ya. Guy got killed by a truck, Jocko. Mm. Darn shame. Here's your meatloaf, Harry. Oh, thanks, Pop. My wife says I shouldn't eat meatloaf. It gives me gas. But I love it. Hot roast beef sandwich, Jim. Thanks, Pop. Where's Nelly? I passed the ketchup, Harry. Yeah. Uh, Nelly's busy out back. Ralphie's poorly. Yeah, poor kid. You from California this trip, Harry? Yeah, mixed freight for KC. Seeing that you was coming from the west, I wondered whether you saw a black truck along back. Highway patrol was chasing it. I saw a cop doing about 80, but I didn't see no black truck pop. You, Harry? Uh Uh-uh, and I keep my eyes on the road, not like you, Jay. (laughs) Truck was from Universal Road Freight, black truck. Never heard of the outfit. You, Harry? Maybe an independent. Uh, what do the cops want? They said this black truck deliberately forced a passenger car off the road on purpose. Driver was killed. Darn shame. Coffee, Harry, Jim? A light. Regular. Yeah, one right, one regular. About that accident, they always blame the truckers. My wife says that the average trucker who knocks off maybe 100,000 miles and more per each year can't help but be a better driver than some Joe Blow who does maybe about 10. And it stands to reason, Jim. Yeah. Does it, fellows? I beg your pardon? What I meant was, 
Not everything is run according to reason. Who asked you, buddy? Nobody. But I couldn't help hearing what you said. Buzz off, mister, will you? You're bugging me and my pal. Now, leave him alone, Jim. Well, gents, anything else I can get you? Sure, some privacy. Knock it off, Jim. How about you, mister? You want some? Not yet. Maybe later. I have plenty of time. And like I was saying before I was interrupted, my wife says to me, Harry, she says, how many drivers have a record like you? One million miles in just over eight years without a scratch. Hey, I didn't know that, Harry. That's a real record. <laughs> Did you ever hear the expression, pride goeth before a fall? He's here again, Harry. Look, mister, I heard the expression, but I also know that I have a million mile safety record, and I'm proud of it. And I don't care who knows it. One million miles. Very impressive. That's right. One million miles. Uh, when I'm through with this run, that is. Oh, I see. You don't have it yet. Well, no, no. I mean, well, not yet, but almost. Like 27 miles outside of Oklahoma City, I figured... Well, no, I don't have it now, sure, but by tomorrow morning... Cut it or... out, Harry. You don't have to apologize to this creep. One million miles, that's an accomplishment. It would be. Come on, Harry, let's get out of here. Pop, the checks. Check? No cake? No pie? No ice cream? How come you're in such a hurry? I'll see you some other time, Pop. Here's a buck and a quarter. A buck ten for me. So long. So sure. So sure. Pop, I'll have coffee now. Black. Look, mister... Take your business someplace else. You chase away my best customers. You sit around and then order coffee. Beat it. Vamoose. Coffee. Black. You've got to serve me. Go somewhere else. I've decided to remain here. And whenever I'm on my run, I'll come in here if I wish. You understand? And as for Harry and Jim, if I don't meet them here, I'll meet them someplace else. That's the way it's going to be. Another cup of coffee, Pop. Black and fresh this time. I serve what I serve, mister. Fresh. Look, mister. I've been working for pretty near 24 hours steady. My head is full of troubles. Don't try my patience. You chased all my customers away. I'm going to close up tonight. I can't make it till morning. I'm staying. Last chance diner, it says. Shadow Valley, Arizona. Open 24 hours. That's a contract. Coffee. Black. After this customer. Jim. How come you came back? Bob. You forget something? Harry... He lost control of his truck right ahead of me on Three Mile Hill. He's dead. Killed. One million miles, but not quite. Are you still here? Who are you, mister, anyway? A truck driver. Janice is my name. Mr. Janice. I drive for Universal Road Freight. <laughs> Sounds dead. Can't do nothing until the telephone line's fixed, Jim. Why does it have to be dead just now? That is what people always ask about death, whether it's a telephone or a man. Janice, will you get lost? What you all forget is that death is an incident of life. Man, I met some crazy truck drivers in my life, but you're the end. I have heard that before. You're going to hear a lot more, Mr. Janice, if you don't keep your nose out of other people's business. My nose is everywhere, Pop, isn't it? You are going to hear some things you don't want to hear, fella. Like what? Like the police are looking for you, that's what. Oh? Yes, oh. For forcing that car off the road. And they got a pretty good description of you, Mr. Janice. 
Doug McLeod went up west looking for you. Do you think he'll find me there? He'll find you when he comes back. Suppose I go east? You wouldn't get very far, would he, Jim? Not in this country. There's just one road for 75 miles, straight as a ruler and flat as a pancake, except for Three Mile Hill. East or west, that's your only choice. As a matter of fact, I hadn't intended moving at all, Pop. I'm staying here. What do you have for dessert? I got nothing, Mr. Janice. That's what I got. Nothing. This is a house of trouble, mister. A man, a, a good customer and a good friend. A good man has just been killed. My own grandson is struggling in the shack out back, struggling for breath. Struggling to live out the night. And all you can think about is your belly. Why not? I see death wherever I go, and so do you. Funeral homes, cemeteries, accidents, wars and headlines of wars, murder and the wanton taking of human life through ignorance and poverty and hatred. But you don't care. You ignore it until it strikes close to you, and then you want the world to stop to pule with you, to cry in universal condolence. Otherwise, you don't give a thought to death which is an ever-present fact of life. You picnic in the cemeteries of the world. Hey, what are you, some kind of nut? Making speeches in a diner? The last chance diner. Ah, shut up. You give me the willies, talking like that to me with my, my buddy lying out there in the dark, smashed to pieces in his crumpled cab. Just, just like you kind of predicted when we were John about the million miles. Janice, I... I want you to know right now, I, I think it's your fault. You made him nervous, jumpy. Perhaps. I'm, I'm going to see that you get up for what you did to Harry. I'll get your license picked up, so help me if it's the last thing I do. Bob! Bob, we just got to reach Doc Landis. Ralph, he's feeling something awful. He's he's getting blue and breathing so hard and so slow. The phone's out, Nellie. We've been trying to reach the police. Police? Accident, Nellie. My buddy Harry he got himself killed. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry, Jim. Oh, Pop, I just got to get the doc. No two ways about it. What am I going to do? Maybe the phone will be back. Oh, Ralphie was bad enough, but but then he took a turn for the worse, just after the midnight rush started. He was... He was just like death came in the door, Pop. I could almost feel it. Nellie, let, leave me take my truck. I'll find your doctor. What's his name? No, oh, Dr. Gus Landis, Jim. I'll get him, Nellie. Don't you worry yourself. I'm going back to Ralphie, Pop. Please come up. Close up and stay with me. I I, I don't want to be alone. I'm, I'm scared. A couple of minutes, Nellie. We'll pray, Nellie. We'll pray together. That's what we'll do. We'll do that, Pop. we got to do something. You there, Mr. Janice. You heard what my Nellie said. I heard her. Well, you ain't doing nothing about it. I'm doing all that I intend to do. What you intend and what's going to be is two different things. Strange. I was about to tell you that. What the Sam Hill are you talking about? Your grandson. Your daughter says he's dying. You intend to pray him back to life. That's exactly what I intend to do just as soon as you get. What makes you think I'm leaving? Because I'm closing up. And I'm not going to leave you sitting here, neither. Mister, out. Oh, come on, Janice, have a heart. I don't know where you was raised or how, but didn't nobody ever tell you to be respectful of people's feelings? Yeah, I guess not. I ain't never seen a man so ugly. Not in my whole life. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm all for the truckers... A decent bunch of fellas that I ever saw. But not you. I could believe what Doug McLeod said. You could force a car off the road just from plain ugliness. If my telephone was working, I'd call Mine Shaft and tell him to come pick you up. The telephone isn't working, so I stay safe and snug in the last chance diner. Telephone ain't working, but this gun is. Now stand up. Your hands are shaking. Put it down. Stand up, Mr. Janice. Yeah, that's better. 
You with your fathead speeches about death. How does it feel to face your own? Are you really interested? No. Not in you, in my grandson. I tell you, mister. I tell you, mister, I never held a gun to no man in my life. I ain't got that kind of nerve. Never shot even a jackrabbit. But I can feel my nerve now, and I'll pull this trigger if you don't do exactly like I say. Do you know what you're doing, old man? I know my grandson needs me. I know I don't want you hanging around no more. So you're going to get on your truck and head west where Doug McLeod can collar you. You've done enough for tonight. Perhaps you're right. Keep moving. Walk straight to your truck, Mr. Janice. Now, climb up. Get your motor started and head west. Get the lead out of your pants, Mr. Janice, or I'll put more in. Nellie? Nellie? Shh. He's asleep. He's breathing right easy and regular. Don't make no noise. I want him to sleep. Pop, just now, when that truck drove off, Ralphie took a turn for the better. Yeah, when the truck left. I know. Yeah. I heard you shouting, Pop. What were you shouting for? That fellow wouldn't leave. But I made him. I made him. Queer-looking geezer. We're best clear of him. You say that again. I'll go tidy up and wait for Jim and the doctor. Oh, Jim! Jim! You get the doctor? I call him Pop from Ernie's Grill up the road. Doc can't come right away. He's that busy tonight with sick and dying people. Well, what do we tell Nellie? The boy's a little better. He'll last. Oh, good. That, that uh, character he, he left, huh? That, that pest, Janice? Yeah. Made him head west so Doug McLeod could net him. Bet he's got him now. I sure hope so. He can't get away, not in these parts. Imagine me holding a gun on him. I'm still shaking, but I'm glad I chased him. So mean, so mean. Hey, that's Doug McLeod. What's he stopping here for? Search me. I sure don't want that Janice in here again. Pop, any sign of that truck? You're kidding, Doug. I sent him up west five, ten minutes ago. You must have passed him. Fella named Janice, an ugly, mean fella. You know, I think he done it, that accident. You sent him? Well, I haven't passed anyone for 15 miles. How do you get here, anyway? And before? Why, I checked every truck coming this way. Pa, got some juice or a soda? Ralphie asked for a drink for the first time since morning. He's better, Pop. Uh, Nellie, uh, I couldn't bring the doctor. Oh, but... thanks, Jim. But I, I think he's on the mend. Ever since that truck left... That's it. That's the reason. Because I threw him out. What's all this, Pop? You threw who out? Janice. I, I couldn't stand him. He gave Nellie the creeps and... Scared Harry to smash in the truck. Nobody wanted him. What the heck are you talking about, Pop? That fellow with the truck. The black truck. You were looking for him, and you couldn't find him east nor west. And I know why. Because he came from nowhere. And he went nowhere. And wherever he went, he brought mortal trouble. But when he tried to stay at my place, I fought with him. Nellie heard me. Yeah, that's right. I, I fought with him, and I won. Doug, Jim, Nellie, listen to me. Now I know. Tonight, I fought with the angel of death. Theater 5, 
Market has presented Incident at Shadow Valley, written by Raphael David Blau and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, John Gibson, Jackson Beck, Arlene Walker, Robert Dryden, George Petrie, and Richard Hurd. Audio engineer, Marty Folia. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlasdotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.